Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear professors, colleagues, and friends, it's my pleasure to be with you in the Arab Society of Nephrology Congress. Hopefully, that all the success. We will discuss in brief the dialysis membrane and the modalities going from the low flux, high flux, and finally the medium cut off and high cut off dialysis membrane. The agenda will be updating uranic toxins in brief hemodialysis membrane permeabilities. The Japanese classifications of dialysis membrane, hemodialysis filtration, and big surface area dialyzers, and finally the medium cut off and high cut off dialysis membrane. We know that is a lot of unknowns, including in dynamic toxins, and the number is not yet identified. However, its relation to disease specific or comorbid diseases needs more work in this field. The hemodialysis strategy should be based on the quantification and qualification of each specific molecule. So the three steps approach for a better hemodial outcomes beginning of identification of novel biomarkers for different classes of uranic toxins, meaning medium, size, and larger molecules, and its correlation to clinical symptoms and outcomes, and finally, facilitating its removal in quantification manner as well in qualification manners to get the best outcome. And we know that the hallmark of the disease complication is related mainly to protein pound dynamic toxins. And up till now, the difficulty in removing the protein pound toxins and its gut drive toxins coming from the tryptophan and tyrosine and other metabolites and like uh, protein pound dynamic toxins, the picrisol uh, sulfate and its relation to cardiovascular risk. And the, also, the protein pound uranic toxin is related to vascular toxicity associated with other like asymmetric dimethyl arginine and other uranic toxins involved in the vascular toxicity and vascular calcification with cardiovascular complications. So, the global epidemiology of end stage kidney disease and the disparities in the kidney replacement therapy, so the prevalence of treating end stage kidney disease has growing up in the worldwide due to increasing in the incidence of end-stage kidney disease as well, increasing the facility for dialysis population. The, however, the unadjusted five-year survival of end-stage kidney disease patients is still limited. We can see that it's 41% survival going to 48% and finally 60% in Japan in the past dialysis modalities. So we need more personalization of hemodialysis, more patient risk assessment, planning, and therapy monitoring. However, unfortunately, much of the damage to the vascular system might already be established at the moment patient starts on renal replacement therapy, which might explain why may intervention fail to demonstrate an improvement in the outcomes in terms of heart endpoints such as cardiovascular mortality. So in the analysis membrane, we are going from the low flux to medium flux, high flux, super flux, then medium cut off, high cut off, and finally the pipe plasma filter. And these are the current molecules that each flux can remove. So we can see that high flux can remove up 20,000 Dalton, while super flux is more from 30,000 to 40,000, and the medium cut off can in increase or expand the dialysis uronic toxins up to 45,000. However, high cut off increasing the amount to the albumin level is associated with more albumin loss, and the plasma filter, of course, carry toxins and molecules like immunoglobulins up to 2 million Dalton. We are interested here in this field, and all the dialysis membranes are going from the super flux and the medium cut off range. And this is typically the seeding coefficient curve going from the low flux to the high flux and the medium cut off. And this is high cut off is approaching the albumin and it is not advised to be used in the clinical situation of routinely in the dialysis population. So the medium cut off and hemodial filtration are the cornerstone right now in dialysis, carrying the pest permeability by the membrane directly of the medium cut-off membranes or by the dragging forces through the transmembrane pressure and the convection forces through the hemodial filtration. And both of them, 
when you can see that the dialysis prescriptions and the dialysis membrane progression also improving in the biocompatibility, that meaning that it's more inert, more hydrophilic, and more uh, patient friendly for the blood circulating each time on dialysis, increasing the porosity will evenly increasing the ceramic toxin removal. But we have to think that about that albumin loss should be limited below three grams, unless that there is a nutritional assessment for the patients with higher albumin loss. So this is a dialysis membrane technology going up, in both the inert material, more hydrophilic, more friendly, as well, more permeable. So the ideal membrane, more biocompatible, optimum ultrafiltration, remove the middle molecules efficiently, as well is uh, more and uh, more less thrombogenicity, so we can decrease the anticoagulation during the dialysis session. We need to do more convection therapy as well, uh, convection in a quantification amount, because convection is the only way that we can move bigger molecules like kappa and lambda. So convection therapy in a high flux, what's calling its uh, obligatory or internal filtration, hemodial filtration, or in hemodial filtration post dilution or pre dilution in those quantification manner. The scheme of dialysis and dialysis membrane that could be removing the capabilities of uranic toxins depending on the porosity, the saving coefficient, as well as the surface area. How hard the protein pound uranic toxin could not be removed by any way of the current dialysis membrane unless that it's removed by albumin. So I think protein pound uranic toxin, the only way is the probably in the future by using displacer to displace the protein pound toxin from the alpine or maybe by the bioartificial kidney in the future. What is the maximum for today? We have a membrane permeability, like high performance membranes, hemodial filtration techniques, medium cut off, high cut off, bigger surface area in hemodial filtration mode. The middle molecule range removal satisfactory nowadays by the technique describes and the membrane innovation in dialysis. Currently, we have reaching to remove the, on the left panel, the beta 2 microglobulin. However, we can even remove the light chains of kappa and lambda, which is the 45,000 Dalton. However, not all high flux dialysis membrane are equal. So we can have some dialysis membrane in the range of high flux but is inferior to other in removing the metal molecules. Subsequently, we can decide which dialysis membrane in the high flux category should be used in hemodial filtration first by the thin coefficient curve. As well in the alpha-1 microglobulin, which is nearly doubling the size of beta-2 microglobulin. And this alpha-1 microglobulin is increasing in threat because its relation to inflammation is obvious. So the category of the alpha membrane is a low flux, high flux, medium cut of protein leaking and high cut of membranes that depending on the albumin loss and saving coefficient of the bigger molecules. While the albumin loss in the protein leaking and high cut of could be in the range of nine to 23 gram per session, which is extremely higher than the physiological turnover of albumin. So its use is very uh, uh, limited. While the medium cut of the albumin loss is usually in the range of four gram per session, and the high flux is less by uh, 0.5 gram per session. So the place of larger poor membranes in the treatment portfolio of patients on hemodialysis and the novel insight of more middle molecules ranging up to 45,000 Dalton might substantially contribute to the enhanced cardiovascular morbidity and the mortality. And here is the online hemodial filtration we we'll always use the post-dilution hemodial filtration. However, the pre-dilution hemodial filtration could be used in patients with lower blood flow or patient needs lower doses of anticoagulation. In Enchantis University, we did a lot of clinical studies 
on the hemodial filtration, and we found that on the long-term hemodial filtration technique, we can have some of the DNA methylation improvement. And observably that the hemodial filtration techniques decreasing the DNA methylation as in epigenetic changes is dependent on the doses of convection, increasing the doses of convection, improving the DNA methylation. So beyond the beta-2 microglobulin, there is hundreds of uremic toxins bigger than beta-2 microglobulin that should be removed by the dialysis technique. The reappraisal of hemodial filtration for managing uremic complications, including organ dysfunction, inflammation, oxidation, stress, and compared with hemodialysis, hemodial filtration lowers middle molecule weight uremic toxins more effectively and appear to be related to better survival. So the clinical effect of hemodial filtration, depending on the convection volume, the blood flow and substitution volume used. While there is need, urgent need for the vascular access to improve the maximum possible doses of quantification and filtration fraction. The development of online hemodial filtration in Japan is increasingly over the last few years, as well in the Middle East and Europe. In the Middle East, there is increasing uh, in incidence of uh, patients using hemodial filtration technique. While the, all the clinical studies reveal that dialysis-related amyloidosis improvement, dialysis-related hypotension improvement, improvement in anemia, quality of life, mostly sex and syndrome, and inflammation. As well as the observational studies, there is improvement in the cardiovascular risk and it's related to convection volume. With overall decrease in mortality, morbidity. However, increasing the convection volume above that limit, 23 or, or 25 liters per session in post-dilution mode can carry more albumin loss. So FPGF 23 as well, beta-2 microglobulin are uh, importantly removed more efficiently in hemodial filtration with significant reduction ratio. The clinical trials and randomized trials in clinical performance of the same dialysis show that if we are using the same dialysis membrane in high flux mode and converted that to the hemodial filtration, we have augmented removal by the convection technique of the middle molecules. And finally, the dialyzer classification depending on not on the receiving coefficient alone, however, but to the, as well, the beta-2 microglobulin clearance and classified by the Japanese into five classes from type one low flux hemodialysis to type two to type three, which is the high flux dialysis. However, type four and type five is increasing of the interest of more increasing of the clearance for beta-2 microglobulin. Type four and type five beta-2 microglobulin in the range of 70 ml per minute seems to be the optimum. On the clinical studies for the Japanese, they found that the more permeable dialysis membrane is the more better outcome in dialysis population. And this is consistent in, in the type four and type five dialysis membrane. And the adjusted for risk reduction with hazard ratio for patients with dialysis in the range of type four is much better because this risk reduction value need to be correlated more to quantification of removal of the uremic toxin. So the annual dialysis data report for the 2018 from the Japanese 37% of patients on Japan is going for hemodial filtration, while the rest of the patients on Japan, nearly the 60% on high flux, more permeable dialysis membranes. Again, coming to the larger dialyzer surface area, above 2.0 square meter surface area, and this recent publication that dialyzer surface area is significantly predictor of mortality in patients on dialysis. 
and they found that the the laser classification according to the surface area goes from the small 1.5 till the x large dialyzer which is a more 2.0 square meter surface area and the clinical study revealed that patients with more larger dialyzer had better outcome and the hazard ratio for all cause mortality for the three dialyzer surface area group is better in patients with the X large or dialyzer more than 2.0. And in Chance University, we have intention for using more permeable dialysis membrane and bigger surface area up to 2.6 square meter surface area dialyzer. And we innovate that uh, three years ago in the Budapest by using the surface area 2.6 and more permeable dialysis membrane sufficient to remove middle molecule efficiently to up to, to 0.7. And in our result, we found that we can remove efficiently a lot of ceramic toxins like Kapala and lambda light chain, alpha-1 microglobin, interleukin-6. As well, it's importantly in COVID-19 patients, we know that uh, from inflammation. So in hemodialysis, in the blue panel or in the red panel in the hemodiasfiltration technique using the bigger surface area 2.6 surface area can achieve markedly quantified and qualified removal of the medallic molecules and the alcohol loss in the total dialysis session is about only two grams so it is a safe to be used however the transmembrane pressure is in the range during the four hours of dialysis, meaning that the dialysis membrane is still healthy and fresh all through the dialysis cell. We showed that actual beta-2 microglobulin could be removed by 82%. Tumor necrosis factor could be removed easily in hemodial filtration technique using permeable dialysis membrane. Asymmetric free form of asymmetric dimethyl arginine could be removed as well between high flux and hemodial filtration technique. So the mortality risk in patients on hemodial filtration need more attention on that because there is changing in the volume and changing in the percent all over the world. While in the Gulf area, in the last Gulf, that low KT over V was more common with larger body weight and shorter dialysis time. However, hemodial filtration was used for 80% of patients in Bahrain, 55% of patients in Kuwait, 28% in United Arab of Emirates, 16% in Oman, and 5% in Saudi Arabia. However, this percent is increasingly year by year. So we expected that we have more hemodial filtration. We need to pay attention that the volume of substitution in hemodial filtration need higher volume of more than 23 liters should be achieved. A randomized controlled trial of medium cutoff compared to high flux dialysis or hemodial filtration, there is no benefit from medium cutoff over hemodial filtration when you are using dialyzer permeability in hemodial filtration technique. With cardiovascular risk comparison between medium cutoff and high flux hemodialysis in hemodial filtration are equivalent in the outcome in both all the reduction ratio, as well in the cardiovascular risk, as well in the survival. So patients reported outcome between hemodial filtration and the medium cutoff are equivalent in the degree of fatigue after dialysis, recovery time after dialysis. So medium cutoff dialyzer and protein power dynamic toxin are still missing. We cannot remove even by medium cutoff dialyzer. And medium cutoff removes larger middle molecules. However, the percent is still in the range of our findings using bigger surface area dialyzer and more permeable 2.6 dialyzer in hemodial filtration mode. This is again our results, and in coordinates that these results could be uh, one of the achievements in the near future of the dialysis technique. Lastly, the hard cut of dialysis is going uh, down, uh, the requirement to use high cut of dialysis is less, 
And if you can see this too much replication, especially in patients with myeloma. And however, the impact of high cutoff hemodialysis in all cause mortality is further line. So we can go directly in patients with myeloma with medium cutoff or just high permeable hemodialysis filtration technique is the same. So finally, Mr. Chairman and colleagues, the ARC membrane development over the last decade is going for more porous membrane that permit more qualification and quantification of larger ceramic toxin using more permeable and larger dialyzer surface area in hemodialysis filtration techniques are field of interest to have better outcomes in dialysis population. And thank you very much.